I invite Miss Tammy Ryan, <clears throat> who is a birth doula trainer and one of the 15 trainers of spinning babies to take questions on her masterclass on spinning babies. Hi, thank you for joining me today. Um, I have questions in the chat box. I wanna make sure we get to all of them today. And the first one is spinning babies accepted mainstream in the maternity hospitals in the US and in Canada. And the answer to that is it's growing rapidly. Um, when I first started teaching spinning babies about six years ago, um, we were teaching more to um, doulas and childbirth educators, um, chiropractors, um, <clears throat> many different body workers. And in the last few years, we started having a lot of midwives and nurses take the workshop. And those nurses and midwives have taken the information back into our hospital systems here in the United States. And what we're seeing is a very rapid growth in our hospital systems of spinning babies becoming protocol. So I'm teaching um, primarily today, I teach in the hospital system um, for the entire staff, um, both in the US and Canada. And I've also taught, I've taught this internationally. And so we are seeing that it is being accepted. Um, people, you know, here, especially here in the United States, but really worldwide is how do we lower the primary C-section rate? And spinning babies is one of those options that we're getting great results out of. Um, that's a non-medical intervention. And so um, being able to learn, um, to take a workshop and be able to learn all the positions to be able to identify where the baby is in the pelvis. And then how do you open that level of, pel of the pelvis? Um, I've also used spinning babies in very low resource countries um, where it can be a life-saving technique. Um, when we have labor obstructions, um, being knowing where and how to open that level of the pelvis um, can make all the difference in the world. So I would say um, for this question that it's growing very rapidly. Um, I do have many doctors that take my workshops um, to understand um, not only the labor process, but in pregnancy, because so much of what we do is if the person can have contact um, in, during the pregnancy um, to start the balancing activities um, and maternal positionings um, during their pregnancies, many times then they won't have the problems that they may see in labor. And so um, as we continue to grow rapidly um, in that field, we are expecting and do see um, more of our hospital staff taking it on as protocol. And then um, do a, how long would I recommend to do spinning babies for a breach? And so I think that question is really directed towards the three sisters of balance um, that I did mention in the presentation. And it's so important to have the balance within the body. Um, many times, I think the most important position in that when we're talking about a breach would be the forward leaning inversion. And the forward leaning inversion is meant, is addressing really the uteral sacral ligaments. Um, just from our daily life, we can get a small twist in the lower segment. So as long as there's nothing medically going wrong, um, that the reason for the breach, and it's more of a positional soft tissue of the mother, then um, by doing the forward leaning inversion, you can do that seven to 14 times a day for two to three days to help that um, breech baby encourage to go head down. I would also make sure that um, you'd be including the sideline release and some rebozo work um, with that. Um, and so the recommendation is these can be done daily um, and just increasing that forward leaning inversion. Now for a baby that is head down, we wanna make sure that people um, only do a forward leaning inversion for three breasts down and three breasts back up. And they would only do that once a day. And then for the breach, they would increase that to seven to 14 times a day. This is a static stretch. And so that will hold for a couple hours. And so usually I tell people to um, do a forward leaning inversion every hour or every two hours. And that's how you would get your seven to 14 times a day. Um, the next question, is there any risk for placenta separation in the exercises? Um, the exercises that I talked about in the presentation were just daily exercises it's to include daily movement into our lives, um, to really bring um, good stretches 
um, that really are gonna address the soft tissues of the pelvis. And so as long, again, as long as medically there's nothing going on um, that, that the obstetrician has given um, or the midwife has given um, person has normal activity level, these are very simple, basic activities um, that are not going to um, cause um, a placenta um, separation. Um, these activities are gentler than just walking up a flight of stairs. And so um, there wouldn't be any um, recommendations unless, as I said, we went through some with the side or with the forward leaning inversion. You know, if there's high blood pressure issues, seizure issues, um, things like that, um, then that person would not do the forward leaning inversion, but they would go on and do the others. And as the daily essentials, again, are just very basic um, stretches for the body. Um, let's see the next question from Fernandez. Um, in fact, our obstetricians refer mothers to the Spinning Babies website um, to help reach. How can we help raise awareness among them? Ah, so how can we increase awareness? Um, actually, I think that really comes from all of you. Um, what we have found that is working at least in the States and in Canada is that when people take the workshop, they go back to their hospital or their birth center and they start using the positions and people are seeing the outcomes. And in that it is showing, um, you know, doctors start getting more interested in what's happening. And I have story after story that comes into me uh, from nurses and midwives that had done positions um, when the doctor truly believed that a cesarean was what was gonna be next. Um, so I think this is really how we bring awareness um, is really by our actions, um, by taking what you learn in a workshop and going forward um, and just repeat, um, just, you know, using it as part of life. You know, as you know, when I started spinning babies, um, I've been aware of spinning babies and practicing it for almost 20 years. And it really becomes who you are, the way you look at birth, the way you look at where is the baby in the pelvis. And so um, just being aware um, of those things and it will change how you practice and how the next person that you're working with, um, how do you approach them? When you start looking at where's the baby in the pelvis, your thinking turns, um, you know, you look at things very differently than just what is dilation. So I think, um, you know, we can look at um, how, do we, how do we keep spreading this across the world? And sometimes that's just a matter of, we need to have discussions, you know, the, for the areas that are interested in workshops is it's reaching out um, to, um, you can reach out to me even, um, and look at how can we have more workshops in your area um, so your staff can be trained. And then the next question, can spinning babies techniques be done for twin pregnancies? Um, yes, um, let, let me get the other part of the question. Um, can we use it for women considering VBAC? Um, do you have online sessions of spinning babies for educators? Okay, um, so yes, spinning babies can be used with tint, twins. Um, many times the doctor may recommend some of the daily exercises or the three sisters of balance. Um, again, we start at 20 to 24 weeks, but I do know that some obstetricians, um, especially with twins, may start it a little bit earlier, around 16 weeks. Um, what we're looking for in here is that um, we have something to balance, that the uterus has gotten to a size um, that is ready for to be balanced within the soft tissues. The daily exercises are something anybody can use. So that wouldn't be a problem um, for twins um, or for anybody doing a VBAC. Again, this should always be in um, reference to their doctor's recommendations as far as if there's any health issues. Um, and so just looking at you know, what a health issue, but just because a, a health issue may um, include somebody not going upside down for a forward leaning inversion doesn't mean they can't still be working on balancing activities. And that's the beauty with spinning babies is if there is a medical issue um, and recommendation to stay away from one of them, um, they can still usually do the other ones. And so it would be working with your health, your health team um, to understand which ones are safe for you. Um, but for the most part, yes, they are done with people with VBACs, um, also with um, people carrying twins. And then the next question was, do you have online sessions for spinning babies? 
And if you go to our website, the, um, the full Spinning Babies workshop that I teach um, is not online. And that's primarily because it is a very hands-on workshop. Um, you really have to be able to feel in your body um, um, what the positions are doing. I think when you can incorporate it into your own body and feel, it's easier for you than to do this with a pregnant person or somebody that is in labor. And sometimes you have to adapt positions. I've had to adapt positions because of the location I'm in. Um, I may not have, um, say, a bed that's high enough if I'm trying to do a certain position. And so once you have felt it in your body, um, you understand and you start to realize different ways that you can adapt a position. So in the United States, epidurals are very common. So many of our positions, um, that's our biggest question is how do I do this with an epidural? And so again, that's something we go over in the workshop, different ways of being able to use um, all the positions. Now we do have some, um, Gail has put some classes. Um, there is a resolving shoulder dystocia class that is online. And I believe the breach class just went online. So both of those have happened this year. And those are online classes. Um, I believe they're an hour, oh, I'm not sure how long they are, but um, those are online classes for people that understand the Spinning Babies approach. Um, but anybody can go on um, the spinningbabies.com website and be able to take those two classes. But if you're trying to learn the basic Spinning Babies, the protocols for pregnancy, the um, when you use Spinning Babies in labor, um, that would be a full one day workshop um, that we teach. Um, it can be taught in a one-day workshop or a two-day workshop, and that's primarily what I'm on the road teaching right now. Um, let's see. I want to make sure I get everybody's questions. Um, again, is um, Spinning Babies accepted mainstream? Yeah, Spinning Babies is becoming mainstream in the U.S. Um, as I said, um, primarily it's our nurses and our midwives that are driving that, um, they love the approach. We know that our C-section rates get are lowered in hospitals that are using um, spinning babies. We also know um, patient satisfaction increases and staff satisfaction increases. And in that, what spinning babies is doing is giving more tools to those nurses and midwives um, to be able to um, be able to help their patients more. And I've had started to have a lot of doctors take my classes and residents that take our classes. And again, it's things that they didn't necessarily learn in, um, in school. And so it's giving those step-by-step, -step, how do you open a certain level of the, the pelvis? How do you change the diameter when a baby may be um, stalled at a certain level? And how can we scale up the training? I'm not exactly sure, Indy, what you're asking um, and for that. Um, as I said, the, the best way is, um, especially when we're looking at an international platform, is probably reaching out to me so we can start those conversations um, for spinning babies to really go worldwide. We do have spinning babies being offered in many countries of the world. Um, this year has been a little different, obviously, with um, COVID um, worldwide and the, the inability to be able to travel. Um, but generally, um, I am traveling internationally. We have trainers that are international. So I know we have people from all over the world on this conference. And you, you can go to the Spinning Babies website to be able to look up um, our workshops that we offered, where they're going to be at. Um, right now, I know, um, you know, in some countries, they're not allowed to have the workshops just because of um, restrictions. Um, but we do see that all changing. Um, we do, um, I'm teaching in locations that I can teach in, um, and so are the other trainers. There are 14 of us, as I said, worldwide um, in different countries. And so I think to answer um, that question is really just to kind of reach out um, to me or to Spinning Babies and be able to um, start those discussions on what that would look like. Now, um, you know, we look at some of the things with Spinning Babies. What I gave you um, for the presentation was just a very um, short um, 45 minute, I think it was, um, introduction to what Spinning Babies is. And Spinning Babies, when we look at this, is really physiological birth. And um, when we can bring balance back into our bodies, um, especially throughout the pregnancy and even in the labor, 
Many times the first person that a, per, a pregnant person may contact that knows spinning babies is that nurse or that midwife. And when it's the nurse at the hospital, um, the person's coming in in labor, that nurse has a wonderful opportunity at that point um, to bring balance um, before the labor even progresses much further. And so um, there's so many opportunities depending on what your scope of practice is, what your role is in this birth, um, you know, the doulas and the midwives, the childbirth educators, doctors, they have that, that contact in pregnancy. And with that contact in pregnancy, they can introduce the balancing activities, um, again, starting at 20 to 20, 24 weeks. Um, and what that does is it brings comfort to the pregnancy, um, which in turn will bring ease to the birth. And so I think that's really something um, that's important that people understand that spending babies isn't just about the labor process, even though I know we probably have many, many nurses on here, but I know for US and Canada um, and many locations in the world that people get sent into the hospital for testing throughout the pregnancy. And in that, the nurses have found great opportunities to be able to share just as simply the three sisters of balance. And when they can be able to share that um, within the pregnancy, hopefully then um, they're gonna bring ease into that pregnancy or into the labor process when the person finally does come to the birth center or comes to the hospital. So um, I just really want to point out that sometimes it's, I mean, a lot of times it's the preparation work that's gonna be done. And so um, just really carrying spinning babies over from um, that physiological standpoint and we're starting to see that um, there, you know, large areas of the world, um, spinning babies is doing amazing in Brazil, lowering the C-section rates, um, reach, really changing those numbers. And I think about the pregnant person um, and giving them tools that are actually going to bring comfort to that pregnancy. You know, anytime that a person talks about an ache or a pain um, throughout their pregnancy, it's really an invitation for us to act. An act may be as simple as um, adding movement, adding the three sisters. You know, we have to look at what is that ache or, or pain. And so many times we hear of that round ligament pain or the nerve, the shoot, anterior shooting nerve pain down the leg. And that should be an indication to us when we hear that during a pregnancy, that there's something that's not balanced. And remember, if you have something tight on one side, you have something loose on the other. And that's going to shift the position of possibly our baby. It shifts the way when labor would start, how the baby maybe would enter to the pelvis, um, what will engagement look like. And so starting to pick up and learn what are these things in pregnancies? How can we assess? And when do we, when do we act? Everybody, all of us can use balance. Pregnant or not, we all need balance. And so um, I do many of these exercises on a daily basis just for myself, um, just because um, they work. <laughs> it's physiological um, and they work. And then when we put that into the pregnant body, um, you know, and give that person the empowerment to be able to take control of the movements they do to bring balance into their body. Now, sometimes we have people that have had injuries, past injuries, maybe a car accident or a fall, a bad fall, and muscles need a little bit more work or ligaments need a little bit more work. And that person may have to reach out to a chiropractor, a massage therapist, um, many different modalities in the body work field that will bring balance back in. And so just learning um, to listen and hopefully just starting to change our thinking. I think that's the, really the message I want to be able to share with all of you is really listening to what the pregnant people are telling us and how do we assess and then how do we move forward and as we if we go back into the labor process you know learning what those labor patterns tell us um, labor patterns tell us so many things how is the person um, going through this labor it's not all about just what, what's dilation what is effacement we really need to know where that baby is because I'm gonna do very different positions if we're having an inlet problem, baby's not engaging, versus we're having an outlet problem and that baby's been down low, mom's been pushing, I'm gonna do very different positions then. And then even at the mid pelvis, you know, so what we're looking at and what we learn, especially in the workshops is we talk a lot about what's the difference between 
a comfort measure versus a rotation or descent measure. And that's what the positions within spinning babies do. They open up space. Never at any time in spinning babies are we moving or rotating the baby. We are creating space with these positions for the baby to move and rotate where it needs to go. And sometimes it's just a very little amount of space that a baby needs um, for that rotation to happen or for descent to happen. You know, a really common um, stall we have in labor is gonna be that five to seven centimeter stall, which usually means the baby is pretty close to mid pelvis or right in the mid pelvis. So how are we going to um, open up those levels of the pelvis so the baby can just maybe tuck that chin a little bit more, get some flexion um, so that baby can then um, get a little bit of rotation, then turn, um, have descent. And so we can move on with this labor process. Um, so I think those are some of the things that we really talk about and look at within spinning babies. Um, you know, one of the questions up here, um, a lot of questions about asking about awareness. And I think that's really where spinning babies is right now. Um, is bringing awareness worldwide. Um, we, as I said, we have trainers on different in different countries of the world, um, but we need others. And we know the website. Um, people send people to the website all the time. Um, <clears throat> we, we get so many hits on the website per month of people looking up. And Gail's been very, very generous on the website on how much information she gives out, um, how to do different positions. Um, and so you, you can gather, you know, until we can get a workshop scheduled in your area, um, please check out the website, um, go through and understand different positioning. Um, and, you know, I think that one of the best things is you can practice it even on each other um, before you are working with a pregnant person or a person in labor. So we have lots of different opportunities. Um, and I just want to, you know, encourage you to be the ones that help us spread this word about a physiological approach that really is changing birth on a changing earth right now. Um, we're seeing that. Um, I've had the honor and the, um, to be in many countries that we've been able to introduce spinning babies to. And so um, I'm hoping to continue those relationships and continue that we spread this word. And really, um, you know, how a baby comes into the world um, really makes a difference. Um, not only in that baby's life, but in that family's life and that community's life. And so it, it can be gentle, it can be beautiful. Um, and spinning babies is an approach that um, really helps us achieve that. And so um, I'm really grateful for that. Um, I'm trying to see if I've missed any questions here. Um, <clears throat> several questions as far as um, women using spinning babies with VBAC or any uterine um, abnormalities. Um, again, for the most part, spinning babies is safe for um, most people. But I think anytime, depending what your scope of practice is and what I teach in my workshops, you know, if you're coming from the doula standpoint, you always want your um, client to be asked their provider. Um, these are the, some positions I want to be able to use or some exercises. And is this safe for me? I think, um, you know, most people, if they know if they have high blood pressure or any, um, anything that's going on medically. Um, and those, you know, definitely we want to follow up with the provider um, to have their recommendation. Um, and so, you know, yeah, there are going to be some people that can't use spinning babies because, you know, maybe they have really high blood pressure and they can't get out of bed. Um, you know, so that does change what that looks like. But for the most part, spinning babies, as I said, is, is very safe. They're, it stretches, um, it's movement, it's creating space for that baby to go where it needs to go. And, um, you know, we just want to make sure that everybody is safe. You may be listening and you're the nurse or you're the midwife or the doctor and you, you know your patient. You know if they have a medical condition that would prohibit them. You know, I really look at is the person on bed rest. You know, bed rest is going to take away a lot of the positions that we do. But if the person, if, you know, you're, you're working with somebody and they're allowed to go about their daily life, um, and all the things they do and maybe go to work or take care of family, um, then there really shouldn't be a reason that they can't do the spinning babies, um, either daily essentials or the three sisters. 
And then in labor, you're, you're the one, um, again, whatever your scope of practice, that's monitoring the health right there of mom and baby. And you're going to know, and that's where sometimes we have to make adaptions. Um, you know, I may have somebody in labor that I can't put in a full forward leaning inversion. You know, sometimes we just need to make a little space for that baby to tuck its chin in a forward leaning inversion or shake the apple tree is something that's very useful for that, especially for a baby that's up high. And, um, but if we're already um, having um, blood pressure issues, heart, heart tone issues, things like that, that's going to be a position I can't use at this time. And so I think it's going to, it's not across the board. It's every individual person and you all are, you know, have a different scope of practice that you bring to that. And so I just um, encourage you to stay within whatever your scope of practice is um, to be able to um, carry this forward. And I just want to see, do we have any other questions or anything else? Um, I'm trying to go back through all these. Hmm. I think we may have answered like all the questions. I do want to um, just take, you know, a last few moments that we have here. Um, and once again, encourage you to go to the website. I will um, put my email address um, in, I think it was in my presentation, but I'm going to put my email address right now into the chat. Um, if anybody has any further questions or um, just wants to talk more about how do we keep spreading spinning babies. And I think that's, you know, that's really my goal is um, to make spinning babies worldwide. Um, just typing this in.com. Oh, we have another question. Um, what is the success rate um, ah, for our OP babies? Um, induced or augmented to this one that came through. Okay, so one last question we're gonna try and fit in here. We've got three minutes, we can do it. Um, you know, Spinning Babies really does talk a lot about the posterior baby. Um, and I think one of the things and the rest of this question is posterior babies with that are induced or have, the labor has to be augmented. And there are positions to help encourage rotation for that posterior baby. Um, you know, there's, there's different levels, you know, because we can have that, that baby can be posterior at any level. That can be an inlet problem, a mid pelvis problem, or an outlet problem. And so once again, I need to know where the baby's at to be able to give the correct position. Uh, but really, we look at those posteriors, and a lot of times the baby's going to turn posterior because of the mother's positioning. And so we look again, it goes back into the pregnancy. Is that mother always sitting backwards on her sacrum? Um, and if they're always sitting back in their sacrum, we have a greater chance of that baby turning posterior in the pregnancy. And we see this a lot in the US because we have so many people that um, sit. <laughs> they're sitting all day in an office job um, and, or they go home to watch TV and they're sitting back. And when we do that, we sit back in the, on our sacrum and by sitting back on the sacrum, the heaviest part of the baby's head is gonna turn to that posterior position. And so, Again, it's going back and it's education within the pregnancy to bring that, um, to have our maternal position. Um, now, if we're not finding the posterior position until labor, and I do realize many people, I know it's a big thing right now in the US where um, we're inducing these labors um, for position um, for many different things. Um, and one of the things, depending on how your, how your inductions go is <clears throat> we need to have movement in those inductions. So I know a lot of times I will talk with people that making sure that before the induction even starts that we can um, balance the person, start your induction. And one of the things we'll talk about, um, we talk about in class is that there's so many things we can do instead of starting the induction and going straight to bed, um, having them upright and moving. And that can be as simple as doing some um, dancing bedside if they need to, um, depending on the time, kind of induction that you're doing. Um, doing circles on the ball. Um, and so we need to, when we're starting that inductions, we don't have a contractions helping us right now. And so we need to do things and encourage movement within the pelvic region. And so we are seeing success um, that's happening um, with our inductions um, that are really going to include um, 
uh, that are really going to include a lot of um, position changes. And I'm just trying to get the rest of these questions. Um, someone asked if they would love to share Spinning Babies reference cards, but sadly, I don't. Um, the quick reference card, they're called the quick reference cards that this question is referring to. Those are on the website. They can be bought either in the booklet form um, or there is a PDF download that's um, less expensive. So I, you should, at least as of a few days ago, they were on the website. Um, if somebody's truly looking for them and can't find them, um, it should be under the spinningbabies.com website and then um, under the, our store. And so anyway, I think our time is up. I just want to thank everyone for joining me today with Spinning Babies. And I put my email in there. And so just thank you and have a great rest of your day. Bye.